Good evening, and welcome to our May concert, May Blossoms, a garden tour of musical flowers. The groups that you will hear tonight are the Monomedi High School Band 9 and the Symphonic Band. <clears throat> the selections that compose our program for tonight come from all over the world and represent music from throughout the musical world and community. Tonight we will not only perform for you this wide selection of music, but we will also have the opportunity to recognize many members of our own community, from our seniors, senior music students, to our wonderful teachers, who have helped shape us both as students and people in this community. The first piece that we shared with you this evening was written by a composer very close to our own community in Matamidai. She teaches at Century College. Forge Ahead by Shelley Meyer is an exciting music work that begins with a celebratory fanfare and intensifies, growing both in excitement and in volume. It explores different themes and sounds as various instrument groups are highlighted throughout the band. We hope that you enjoyed this exhilarating piece. Our second selection for you tonight is entitled Rhythm Stand is and composed by Jennifer Higdon. This piece of music pays tribute to the constant presence of rhythm in our lives from the pulse of the community around us. Almost everyone becomes a member of the percussion section at one point in this piece. We will now share with you Rhythm Stand.
Three, er Three Airs from Gloucester by Hugh M. Stewart has been an important piece of music in the wind band community since its composition in 1969. This three movement work is, I is in the traditional English folk song style and is designed to capture the mood of the peasants and their life on the fiefs of Wembley Castle.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you know me, but for those of you that don't, my name is Mike Moeller, and it is my privilege to serve this community as the high school instrumental music educator here at Matamidai. Tonight, uh, there is a group of people that are here because they received an invitation from our music students. As part of our community in the instrumental music world, we have what's known as the band leadership. This is a group that we try to, to keep as student-led and student-operated um, student as possible. And one of the things, <laughs> the joke comes later, Nathan, a little too bad on the timing. Oh. But one of, the th one of the events that this group of students has talked about, um, and it's been a delight to work with them this year, is to recognize the other members of our community that, that help them every day outside of the music area. So AJ or Vivian, whoever is on the lights back there, I'm gonna ask you to raise the house lights a little bit here. If you are here tonight because you got received an invitation from one of these students as a teacher or a member of their learning community, would you please stand so we can recognize and thank you for all of your hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, this program wouldn't happen without your support in our schools, all right? There's, a, there's many groups I get to thank tonight. It is the May concert. But let me just say a huge thank you to all of you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for helping your students, encouraging them in the study of music, and for keeping them here and in, in this vital community. Uh, this is the end of my sixth tour of duty in this community. Hopefully, I get to have many, many more. But one of the goals, and I, I don't know if I've shared it with enough people, but I look at our, at our wonderful community here at Matamidai. I thought it was appropriate, knowing the number of people that do such amazing things in their yards and gardens, to have a, have a concert this evening entitled May Blossoms. If you haven't taken a walk around the community, I encourage you to do so because it is alive and beautiful. And there are many of you who are out in the audience who spend hours and days in your wonderful gardens. And tonight you're going to get a sampling of that music. But without the whole community, this program cannot grow and thrive. We're doing okay, but I think that it's time that we commit ourselves to further excellence. A goal that I have for this community and for this musical community is to see an involvement at the instrumental music side of the world here of 20% of our student population. We're at approximately almost 1,200 students. That would mean, mean, if I do my math correctly, I hope there's some math teachers out there, but if I take 20% of 1,200, that should be 240. It would be wonderful to see this concert feature more bands, more students, and more involvement in this community so that these students can also give back the wonderful gifts that music has created in them. So I encourage you to keep encouraging these young folks to keep making this thing called music and keep helping them grow both as musicians and people. I know that's why I am here and what I strive to do every day. The group behind me is the ninth grade band. They came in about nine months ago um, as former eighth graders. Now they're rising sophomores almost, I think is that's how that works. And they've grown a lot. They've put up with, with me pushing on them and cultivating them and working with them to help them get there, uh, both in music and in life. And I'm very proud of the progress that they've made into tonight's concert. The final selection we have, I'll let one of them tell you about, but it's a pretty interesting work of music. So thank you teachers for being here tonight, and we'll continue with our Community of Music program. Lightning Field comes to us from the visual arts community. This work receives its inspiration from a piece of art by Walter de Maria. In this work, a massive expanse of New Mexico desert has been claimed and transformed by an artist via an installation of steel rods. <laughs> Planted in earth and reached towards the sky. The rods call down the sky power, literally creating man-made, or at least man-summoned, lightning storms. Like them, this piece by John Mackey speaks to the ancient impulse to summon nature's power and the magic that such acts unleash. We will now close our portion of the concert with Lightning Field. Some of our percussionists in this piece are playing 
um, an instrument. Would you four come to the front of the stage for a minute? I didn't tell the uh, symphonic band members they'd get to come to the front of the stage. This piece calls for an instrument called the thunder drum. All right, and so we'll give you a slight demonstration so you can pick that sound up to make sure that it's not just interference in the airwaves here. Go ahead.
Bye, Janet. It's nice seeing you See again. You, you a good girl. Just let me know what I can do to help. Well, to help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch. But the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. She could help me run to the doctor for the fifth time this week. Help me with the specialist and the second opinions and the painful paperwork about paperwork. Help me deal with how hard it is seeing my wife's name on so much paperwork. But this is on me. I'm the only one who can do this, like this, for her. Besides... Take care. We will. <laughs> Janet doesn't like her cooking anyway. Find support for your strength. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community.
Our first selection for you this evening, Spontaneous Beings by Brian Balmages, comes to us from a community not far from Matamidae. Inspired by the city of Duluth, Minnesota, where consortium for this commission was formed, Spontaneous Beings is based on the Ashinabembeg, a large group of tribes indigenous to the northeastern area of North America, including both Canada and the United States. The title comes from the Ojibwe historian Basil Johnston, who, who offered that the literal translation of the name is Beings Made Out of Nothing or Spontaneous Beings. Our second selection is a three movement work with music based upon traditional Jewish klezmer melodies. Klezmer music originated in the Shetel, Shtetl, or villages and the ghettos of Eastern Europe, where <laughs> you put a lot of big words in this one. Itinerant, Itinerant Jewish troubadours. troubadours, known as klezmerim, had performed at celebrations, particularly weddings, since the early Middle Ages. The three movements in this piece come from the following pieces. Shamhari Galan, Tumba La Laika, close. close, all right, and Hava Najila. It is our pleasure to share with you this celebration music. Thank you. 
It is a night where we get to honor a lot of the members of our community. Next, I have the privilege of presenting two awards to two members of this community. The first award this evening is the Louis Armstrong Jazz um, Award. That award is given to students who not only um, demonstrate a dedication and a high level of musical skill, but more importantly, um, operate under a, a higher level of leadership and contribute to the program in many ways outside of just making music. This award is decided upon by students in our Jazz One course, and tonight it is my privilege to pre present this award to Mr. Nathan Haugen. The next award I get to present is the John Philip Sousa Award. The John Philip Sousa Award is also presented to the student who demonstrates not only a high dedication and leadership in musical skill, but also in the organization. This is also an award that is decided upon by our students at Matamidi High School. At this time, I would like to present this award to Marcella Manival. We travel to Argentina for this next piece. Street Tango was composed by Astor Piazzolla. This popular Argentine composer adds a new dimension to the traditional tango with his use of jazz elements, extended harmonies, and dissonance. A distinctive, almost improv improvisatory composition, it's beautifully adapted for concert band and displays a remarkable variety of textures and tempos, a vibrant and appealing work for the concert stage.
Now I need to call to the front of the stage the following students. Gino Bacci Galupo, Mitch Bradley, Claire Grilly, Nathan Haugen, Dan Hoyer, Austin Kelly, Austin Kester, Marcella Manival, Grace Newmiller, Jonah Northwood, Blake Rutger, Claire Rutger, Anton Rothweiler, Nikki Schrantz, Melissa Thorud, Thomas Zelmer. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our students in the instrumental music program on the concert band side. If you were at our jazz concert a week ago, you know there are a few other seniors in our program as well. Uh, this, this group represents a wonderful group of students who have uh, persevered many long years of scheduling challenges to make sure band is in their schedule, as well as all the other AP courses and other things that they've decided to take, courses at 9, 16, and all their wonderful opportunities. Uh, this group is, is, forms a great group of leadership. As we talk about band leadership in our community, they, they are the top of the pyramid. Uh, a very wise man once told me, here your, your, great, your years will go how your seniors lead. And I, I didn't think much of it at first, and, and, and I completely agree now. So the seniors are tasked with leadership just by being here, by showing up, by being part of every, every day, day to day. They don't even realize how much they demonstrate that for the underclassmen, as, as well as uh, how much of a help they are to me. This group of seniors, uh, like I said, represents my sixth class. They're a great class. I wish them the, the, the greatest future that I can. I hope that it includes music in your community as you go from here. You may find yourself seniors in a very short amount of time in an entirely new place. Or you may wake up in the same place, but you can't be part of the high school band program. Um, <laughs> either way, keep making music. It's part of who you are. And I can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us in your time here. Thank you very much, seniors, class of 2017. about Mr. Moeller and the band program and everything that it means to us. So, yeah. Okay. Well, although I think I can speak for many of us when I say that at times we can get kind of tired or frustrated with Mr. Moeller's high expectations of us, what we may not always consider is that Mr. Moeller expects great things from us, not because he enjoys making our lives harder, but it's because he believes in each and every one of us. I don't think that I'm alone in my appreciation for his commitment to this community. So, Mr. Muller, thank you for going above and beyond. Mr. Muller puts in 100% of his efforts and his passions into the band program, and we all really appreciate that. We all know how much he cares about our music program, and I want to share a little story of a time when I especially noticed that he really cared about every single one of us. There was one morning not too long ago, I just wasn't having the best morning, probably because I was tired, as most teenagers are. <laughs> and like I was just putting together my saxophone, and Mr. Muller walked up to me, put a hand on my shoulder, and just asked me if I was okay. I was, but it just really meant a lot to, for, to me to know that he cares, and he cares about all of us, and that just means a lot. From freshman year to senior year, <laughs> Mr. Mo has always stressed the importance of keeping music in our lives in whatever way possible. For the longest time, I heard him say these words and I kind of thought, yeah, whatever. <laughs> However, <laughs> junior year, I learned the true significance of Mr. Mo's wise words. <laughs> I, like many high schoolers, was extremely busy with sports, extracurriculars, a foreign language, and the like. 
and I thought it would make my life a whole lot easier to just drop band for a semester and try to get you know, my, required, my required courses out of the way. Oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> I still remember how much of a slog each day of first semester junior year was. I had three AP classes, a CIS class, two additional social studies courses, and no room for band, unfortunately. <clears throat> Without the much needed break in my day to relax and make a little music, I found myself becoming more and more stressed every day. Needless to say, I learned my lesson. I missed having music in my life so much that I became a shared student second semester, taking both band and choir, and I've been happily doing that ever since. Although staying in band forced me to take gym senior year with a bunch of freshmen in Austin. <laughs> I'm still so thankful that Mr. Mo has always encouraged all of us to continue making music in whatever way that we can. And I think that we've all become better musicians and people because of it. All right. Oh, Grace is taller than me. That's okay. Um, so as you can see, Mr. Moeller has a huge role in all of our lives beyond just being a band director. But I want to take a couple steps back and acknowledge him in that role as a band director. So his job is to wave his arms in front of us and hope that we push the right buttons and make all the good sounds. <laughs> but an important tool in doing that is his conductor's baton. Now, a few months ago, he lost his baton. He thought someone had taken it, just wandered off, accidentally grabbed it or whatever. But later, Will Gunther found it, and it was in his office. <laughs> I mean, obviously he found it, otherwise we'd probably be having a problem right now. You know, no conductor. Anyway, <laughs> we wanted to give him one that he will not be able to lose, because it's a little more flashy than the one he has right now. <laughs> Thomas from the tuba section has a, has a special little thing here coming up, but before he, he gets there, um, ladies and gentlemen, this can't happen without you. So first and foremost, thank you parents. Thank you for not letting them quit. <laughs> thank you for encouraging them to come back if they did. And I can't thank you enough. Um, I have an incredible spouse uh, who's my greatest support and also my greatest grounding rod. And there'll be days when I go home and I, and I think that I, I don't understand, and I'll say to, and she'll be very good about reflecting with me about, well, remember what it was like to be a ninth grader? Remember what it was like to be a 10th grader? Remember what it was like, et cetera. Um, but she and I go back to this very important, this very important time in her life. Uh, she was an eighth grader who wanted nothing to do with ninth grade band, absolutely nothing. And her parents, she still says it's one of the greatest fights they've ever had is making her sign up for a ninth grade band. And, and my wife is a musician, not by trade like myself. Um, she works in book publishing, but she ha is a musician uh, every day of her life. And because of that, um, we actually met in college band, um, but because of that, she gets to make music. And she thanks her parents. I think for that one parental fight where they won, even if it didn't feel good at first, more than a lot of other things uh, growing up, and she has great parents, I have great in-laws, but if, if you are in that, that zone of like, well, I don't know, please know, <laughs> we want your student here. There's always a place for your student in this community, and I will do whatever I can to keep that going, and I mean that sincerely. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all, ninth grade students, you're almost sophomores, all right, which is awesome, you get to join us on this stage. Um, seniors, I thank you, sophomores and juniors, I thank you. I do have high expectations. I want the greatest thing in the world for all of these kids, all right? Um, so I continue to push, but thank you, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, whoever gets them here with the crazy schedules you all live, I greatly thank you. Huge thanks tonight to our technical staff, A.J. Fossen, and Vivian, I believe, Vivian Rose Guilfoyle's back there. 
Thank you to my high school music colleagues, Chad Garls and Joan Fitch, the rest of the music colleagues in our district, uh, our ad administration in this building. I do have one more announcement, but I have to grab the sheet so I tell you when it is, and that's a huge thank you to Channel 19 for being here and sharing this in our community, and I'll tell you when it's gonna be rebroadcasted momentarily after Thomas takes the mic. Sorry, they always put these a little too short. <laughs> okay, well, if you don't, if you're not familiar with this, every year, well, that, that a senior two of player leaves, we give it to the next in line, and that is Kyle. So, Kyle, here is your crown. It's definitely not from Burger King. Okay, Kyle, as a new tuba king, your responsibilities are. Ask Jack what the rhythms of any song or part you play are, even though he doesn't play the same thing as you. <laughs> ah, crap, where was it? Ask Jack what notes you play, even though he plays a different instrument than you. <laughs> ask Jack what measures you are going to start to play at. Also, you must ask Jack to tap you whenever you have rested for more than 10 measures so you know when to play. <laughs> but as the, t as the tuba king, your goal is to not just bug, pester, and annoy Jack. In all seriousness, your goal is to support the band. As Mr. Muller would say, you are our base, and we need to build off of you. I like to think of it as you're an inflatable life raft. Life raft. <laughs> we, need, uh, we need you to live, basically. <laughs> we're, we d our plane just crashed, and we're in the middle of the ocean. You're keeping us afloat. Okay. And uh, Kyle, when I started teaching you this year, I started teaching you this year, you knew absolutely nothing about tuba, and you've progressed so much. <laughs> I'm very proud of you, and I know that Mr. Muller is, and I know you'll make the band proud. <laughs> and lastly, here's the, the, the review or the additional screening times of this concert on Channel 19 on May 16th and 17th at 7 p.m. and May 18th at 3 p.m. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe Nathan's gonna tell you a little bit about our final piece. Thank you for coming out tonight. Teachers, thank you for coming out if you received an invitation, teachers. And if you didn't and you're just here to be supportive, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for being part of this community. Thank you for including me in this community and all these wonderful music students. Nathan Haugen. Okay. And our final selection for you this evening is composed by Julie Giraud and is a large bouquet of many Italian music hits. Italian Rhapsody is a collection of Italian folk songs and a few operatic excerpts scored with Italian gusto. Solo clarinet opens this work with a certain mafioso flair, developing into a devious rendition of the Italian Wedding Song No. 2, also known as the Wedding Tarantella, Caderna, composed by A.D. Arcangelo, is presented in both an Italian street band and contemporary march style. Giacomo Puccini's La Boheme Quando Man Vo, which is Musetta's waltz, makes an appearance as an accordion player serenading young lovers in the moonlight. The finale features Luigi Denza's Funiculi Funicula, Giuseppe Verdi's Il, Trivo Tr Il Trovatore, which is Act Two, the Anvil Chorus, and Giacchino Rossini's Barber of Seville. Italian operatic and folk song musical quotes are interlaced throughout this work. See if you can find them all. This work is scored with an Italian passion for family and feasting. Italian Rhapsody is definitely one very spicy musical meatball. <laughs> <laughs>